Um, who here has played a sport before? Any sport. Um, if that equipment could make you, if the equipment you use could make you better and perform better, wouldn't that be cool? Sure. Well, it would be cool to some people, but it would create an unfair playing advantage to others. And it would create base the game based off access to equipment. Hello, my name is Eli Holden. Welcome to my TED Talk. Uh, the USGA, United States Golf Association, and RNA, Royal and St. Andrews Golf Club, Golf Club of St. Andrews, use or regulate the equipment and um, regulate the equipment and rules used in the game of golf. The USGA covers North America and some of South America. The rest of the world is governed by the RNA. And they work together to create a uniform set of rules so golf is the same in, across the world. This brings me to my research question. How can the manipulation of golf equipment change launch conditions and ultimately the game of golf? The second part of this question was focused on in my thesis, but it was more focused on because I didn't know how to conclude what I was researching. In this talk, the second part of this question is not going to be brought up. Why? For me, understanding the effects or the influence of a club head ball interaction might better have given me a better understanding of what is fundamentally worth going on at contact. So if I can identify what is going on, I can figure out ways to improve it and make myself a better golfer. But also, in the game of golf, there is a growing controversy relating to distance. And this controversy can be seen in, all over the game. It's changing the dynamic of courses and the way the game is being played. This can be seen here. This is a scorecard from the 1940s, 1930s area. And it is of Augusta National. Um, primarily, we're looking at the championship distances and to what it is today. On the front nine, seven of the holes are longer than they were in the 1930s. One hole is the same, one is shorter. On the back nine, two of the holes they made changes to account for over 220 yards of distance changed. And that is hole 11 and hole 15 from the 1940s to 2023. This was the yardage for each hole. Um, the layout of courses are fundamentally being changed, and it's because players are improving their distance and accuracy. This is hole 11 um, at Augusta National. In its original design, way wider, less hazards, and shorter. As time has gone on, it has gotten far narrower. Hazards like water and bunkers have been added and different design, like more trees and just overall hazards. And this is because players are getting better. Um, a change to the way a course has been played can be seen here at the Bay Hill Invitation, or Arnold Palmer Invitational. This is Bay Hill number six, pole number six. It's a 550 yard par five, typically if you play going along the fairway. Bryson DeChambeau in 2022 drove the ball over the lake 370 yards, leading him 70 yards, a 70 yard shot in, making the hole essentially 440 yards more. So this changed the entire layout of the course, giving him an advantage. Um, how do design characteristics come into play? Design characteristics seek to change launch conditions, so the influence of the ball, and that is the ball speed, spin, angle of attack, um, dynamic loft, effective loft. These things will ultimately change the outcome of the shot. Um, one design characteristic that changes things is the shaft. Shafts are um, commonly described by stiffness, although stiffness across companies varies. So any one like stiff shaft for TaylorMade is gonna be a different feel than a shaft from Callaway. 
they don't measure in like a uniform like kind of cross off. Um, the shaft is important because it doesn't add energy, it only optimizes the efficiency of energy transfer. So it can only um, kind of reduce the amount of energy being lost from the downswing. And it's also a really important factor in feel. In the downswing, as the club, as the club head resists the motion, there's an initial bend at the top of the downswing, and some players can feel that downswing. And with different shafts, stiffnesses, shaft stiffnesses, um, different um, feels. Like if it doesn't bend enough, or and this is also true at the end of the, at the downswing at the bottom of this near impact. You can feel the club release through and come forward. And if it's too far forward, it might affect your feel and your launch. Um, the average length of the shaft sold on at a store is 46 inches. But the average professional shaft length is 44.75. And this is, a, this is because shorter shafts are just easier to hit. There's less that can go wrong because of the distance from you to the ball. Um, and why that is, is because it makes a more generalized shaft. Like almost anyone can use a 46 inch shaft, but it's not gonna help their game necessarily. Another um, design characteristic is the center of gravity. Center of gravity has a huge impact on characteristics like spin. Um, the initial design of a club was a blade or muscle back where most of the mass resides in the middle back portion of the club. Um, in the 1960s, the cavity back was developed, moving mass outwards and downwards. So this will lower impacts, like lower contact points will create more spin on the cavity back, making it easier to hit for shallower swings and add more launch to the swing, to the shot. Um, center of gravity also is also influenced by the position of the shaft relative to the club head. There are limits on how far the shaft must be from the club face. I don't know the exact number. I, th I think it's a 15, 16th of an inch, 5 sixteenths of an inch away from the club face. But this will affect the manner in which the shaft bends. So this was a study done on the different points on or different locations of the shaft relative to the center of gravity. And in the final points of the downswing, there's huge changes in the amount of bending going on. And so a shaft with this inline, mm -hmm. like to the center of gravity, won't bend or twist as much, so it will reduce the amount of dispersion of shots, increasing accuracy. That is why they have limits on the placement of the shaft. Coefficient of restitution is the amount of energy being retained in a shot. So if it's going, it's measured like zero to one and anything in between, like a zero would be throwing two pieces of gum at each other and them falling down, zero energy is being retained or restored. Uh, closest thing to a one is like a cue ball when it hits another ball and stops and transfers that energy. That would be the closest thing. And so the amount the club face can restore has been limited to 0.83. And that was because at the time of, in the 19, late 1990s, titanium sh uh, club heads were becoming a thing. And they had already allowed the conformity of these driver heads that were 0.83. So going back would lead to lawsuits and different things like that. So that's where they the limit was, like they had already achieved that, so they didn't allow for anything more. In the 1999 season on the e, uh, European tour, uh, 57 golfers went in with a driver higher than 0.83. At the end of the year, only three of them continued to use that driver. And that is because with more distance, it becomes more like the, the, a greater margin of error. So they were hitting it further, but they're also missing it more. Like when you miss the ball, it's gonna be worse than when you hit it. And um, the RNA didn't enact the 
coefficient of restitution rule until 2003. So that's why they were able to um, try that out and experiment for themselves. This test has since been replaced with a characteristic time test. And this test measures the amount of time this sensor spends on the club face before it is um, it leaves it. And that has been set to 257 milliseconds, including tolerance, or microseconds. And that is a millionth of one mic microsecond is a millionth of a second. Um, this test all was it became the universal test for um, essentially COR in 2004, but it doesn't measure COR. It measures something else, and that something else relates to mass. And so as mass increases, the amount of time spent on the sensor increases. And so with Tom Wishon, my kind of mentor in this TED Talk process and like talking about golf, he's a world-renowned golf club manufacturer. He um, developed the club head that at a certain weight meets the conformity test and at a certain weight doesn't. And he sent it to a um, place in Thailand that has a COR machine. And it didn't change the COR, it only changed the CT test. And so that affected his business. The last and final way to really change a ball um, and its effects with the club is MOI, moment of inertia. If you can think about this as a figure skater, and when they're outwards, they can spin quicker, or they spin slower, and as they move inwards, they spin quicker. So it's like the resistance to motion. And so when you have an off-center hit at impact, the club head is gonna move in the direction of the off-center strike, creating a spin angle that is off-center. And so this has been limited to 59 grams per centimeter squared. But, and this is measured by a machine that like jiggles and can measure the resistance. Um, no club head really reaches this because the design, like the circular design of a club head just doesn't allow for the mass to work in that way. Um, over the last 40 years, driving distance has gone up about 40 yards. And I thought equipment was the reason for this. Um, but it's not. Um, scoring averages have only gone down about stroke for professional tours. Putts per round have gone down 0.4 putts per round, which really isn't that much. Greens and regulation have only increased 0.06%. So they're not getting, pros aren't getting more accurate. They're not getting closer to the greens. They're not hitting more greens. They're not making more putts. So there really is no difference in their effects based on distance. The biggest thing that has changed since the 1980s is club head speed. In 1980, the average club head speed was 104 miles an hour with the driver. In 2023, it was 116.92. Every one mile an hour gain in club head speed equates to about 2.8 yards of carry distance. And so over the last 40-ish years, that's 36 distance just in club head speed. And then I took the leading driver, the leading distance driver's average. In 1980, it was 274. And in 2023, it was 226. And there's a 56 yard difference. If we assume that their average speeds are what was here, um, then the coefficient, the difference in club head technology has only added eight yards because of their uh, springiness of face. Um, and so I was initially wrong. I thought the majority of changes were because of the club head and the technology involved in making clubs. And I think that's a very common misconception, when in reality, it's not. Um, regulations prevent the amount of energy that can be restored from a club. They prevent the amount of um, like movement from a club on off-centered hits. 
So they restrict the amount of like the potential for a, um, um, improvement from clubhead design. I didn't think um, physical performance could increase that much, but because of exercise science and swing analysis, you can greatly improve your club head speed and these techniques. Um, conclusion. There's so much technology out there in the golf world, there's no reason that the average handicap of a golfer should be the same as it was in 1980 which it is, it's around 16.3. And that is because the golf brands in the world don't seem to, they don't strive to fit people, they strive to sell. And so golf is not a one size fits all sport. It can't be because every swing is different. Every loading profile is different. Everybody's body is different. And so the only way to improve um, a person's abilities through club design is to fit them and like look at their individual like qual traits. And with the fitting, you're trying to change one of five things or any of five things, and that's distance, accuracy, trajectory, consistency, and feel. Um, these are the five things that like will change someone's game to a level worth getting clubs. A effects are all the effects that um, really have an impact, like a seeable impact. The B effects are something like if you're already dialed on um, a specific category, maybe changing this would slightly help you. Um, there needs to be a shift in attention. There cannot be this one size fits all shift, um, idea in golf anymore because golf equipment is not cheap and spending all that money on something that doesn't really benefit you just isn't worth it. Um, there needs to be a better way to individualize the game and make it accessible for everyone.